I will be talking about the because all of us know that the spacecraft systems need uh, utmost uh, quality and reliability to be built into it, not just uh, it's a matter of chance. So, what all the things uh, because in a short time of uh, half an hour, uh, we have to cover various activities which go into the uh, into the practice of ensuring the reliable and qualified systems are flown for the space system. So, as was told, I have various experiences. So, based on all these interactions, this presentation is a uh, coin and uh, some important terminology, of course, all our seniors here, I don't think I need to explain this much, but in the modern days world, quality means uh, it is a fitness for use or customer satisfaction. Reliability is what is the probability that this item will perform its intended function for a specified interval. So that interval I will come to under stated conditions. This is not uh, most in important. So the environment under which it is supposed to function, it has to function. And for the given duration, at that time, what is the probability of its function? And availability is mainly for ground systems. There, whenever a system has to be pressed into service, how much uh, readiness it is there. So that is a statistical number available. So what makes space systems special compared to uh, terrestrial systems? Otherwise, the quality is a function, especially in today's world where customer is the king. Definitely, there is a no doubt that quality has to be embedded into every system that we develop. But space systems are a bit different in the sense because the main reason, sir, the operation is unattended and the product that is developed, let it be a spacecraft or a launch vehicle, it is a multidisciplinary product. You name any branch of engineering that will be playing a role in the making of these products. Sir. And another important thing, especially for the spacecrafts, is the spacecraft has to work in the environment of space, This is which is quite hostile. Okay. And uh, another important aspect is the low volume. See, James Webb Space Telescope, if you take for example, over 40 years the product was developed. I don't know how many project teams would have changed, how many project directors would have changed, and the product is developed across uh, various uh, uh, geographical locations uh, around the globe itself. So all these places, how do you ensure uh, over so many decades that uh, so whatever focus is there on quality is undisturbed and still all the people involved are focused on doing that. So especially sometimes like Chandrayaan itself will take. It is over last failure to know itself four years, initial development if you consider. So over such a long period, how to ensure that the final product is reliable. Then we have constraints, especially because launch vehicle can lift only a certain amount of weight and the volume is constrained. Ma mass is constrained and power also, how much you can generate, it is also constrained. So within these constraints, how to get the desired functionality, desired reliability, that is the most important challenge as far as space systems are concerned. I am sure it will be true for whatever system we take, every system will have its own challenges. I am focusing on what makes space systems slightly different from terrestrial systems. So the major components of space systems are launch vehicle, where the operational reliability is important. That means if you launch say 10 spacecrafts or 10 launch vehicles or 30, like for example recently Ariane 5, they have closed their operations. Out of 177 launches, they just had two failures. Okay? So 175 failures. So that is the type of, that's how the launch vehicle reliability is seen. Whereas for a spacecraft, the classical definition of reliability, whatever I told, the probability that the spacecraft, but here the most important aspect is the life assurance. If you take some of our communication spacecrafts, okay, so they are all even in the world wide, they are all designed for a life of 15 years and they generally are expected to perform much beyond that because such a huge investment is made in the build of the spacecraft, including launch vehicle when we see. It will be some thousands of crores. So that kind of investment when it is made, the spacecraft and the services have to be available for a long time. So the life assurance, because we have mechanisms which are running at 5000 rotations per minute, so without being attended to. So how do you ensure a wheel which starts its uh, uh, rotation 
after launch at 5000 rpm for 15 years he is functioning at the end of 15 years without any hitch so that is the challenge with respect to the space time and ground station because two types of ground things are there one is for testing the spacecraft and the rocket and all at the ground so that is one part of it and even operating the spacecraft okay as it is in the orbit regular maintenance and any problems if they are there to fix so that is one part of the ground station other is like remote sensing spacecraft if we take there is a segment which has to receive the data from the payloads that like it could be a camera or it could be a radar yeah, all those data has to be received on the ground then disseminated to the user segment so that is where the ground station comes into picture and there as i have told availability is a major important so just to illustrate the importance of as i told when products are developed over few decades how to inculcate that culture i will just give an example where we went to kuru that is a launch pad there there was some uh, pa to our program director at that time so he appears very normal like that so but then i have requested uh, mr jay prakash to type a letter for me so he has done at those days uh, this many pcs laptops these are all not there on typewriter he has done it so i found that in a two pages thing he has just uh, typed one word wrong i was really surprised he has done a very good job so i told jp everything is fine except that one word is typed wrong immediately he became so restless mistake tap ananinda aita i have done a mistake you just show me show me like that you give me the draft you have given i told i have thrown it then he went search the dust bins and pull out the paper and there actually i have written that because it was a technical word in my writing my writing only was the wrong so what i am trying to tell here is that quality conscience whatever we do it can be any job so that has to be done perfectly that is the type of culture which has to be inculcated then another important aspect when we talk about uh, any high reliability product is understanding of the environment because a product may work very well under certain conditions but if it has to work in say sahara desert it is important that it is tested for that so the same way the space environment it is characterized by very very harsh uh, uh, parameters one is weightlessness everybody knows of course because we see so many videos of uh, shuttle where astronauts are all floating around and all that and vacuum is another important uh, thing where if you take a geosynchronous orbit the levels of vacuum could be 10 power minus 15 tor where 1 tor is 1 mm hg 10 power minus 15 to 10 power minus 18 so that is the type of uh, vacuum it is there it has got its own impact on various parameters and temperature see there are three major sources for the uh, affecting the spacecraft temperature one is the sun where the side whichever is facing the sun can get heated to even 100 degrees at plus and space itself if you take it is a deep uh, uh, very very cold it is 4 degree kelvin the space temperature is 4 degree kelvin so on one side you have sun other side the space itself is there which is 4 degree kelvin and reflected radiation from the earth that is the albedo and spacecraft internal uh, dissipations all these things will form the environment for the temperature and unless it is designed for that environment it is not possible to see that the spacecraft functions so the expected designs validation all those things are done another important environment that we talk in space is the particulate radiation where cosmic uh, radiation is there there are some entrapped particles in some particular beds so all those things will be having effect on the electronic uh, circuits then micrometeoroids magnetic field then dynamic environment which is faced during the uh, launch itself so all these aspects the spacecraft has to be designed tested and validated for all these things then does it come free no definitely we all know as i was telling the example of james webb space telescope the cost of that is 1 lakh crore surplus and in the next satellite which we are going to okay, launch in coordination with NASA, uh, in collaboration with NASA is NISR. Okay. So NASA is the synthetic aperture radar. That project is costing 10,000 crore rupees okay, just to the spacecraft alone launch and not okay. So this is the type of cost that comes because the spacecraft has to be made so reliable. 
So this is a famous curve in the quantitative circles, where it is the life. It's called the life characteristic curves. So in this, the infant mortality, like if it is actually probability density function. So where the infants, if you take a stillbirth is a very normally if you take percentage of deaths in different age groups st at the stillbirth we will be having some concentration and within one year of a child's age uh, we know that the percentage wise if you take to that population who are within one year that will be very high in infant mortality but after you take out the infant mortality between say 5 years to 50 years almost the death rate will be more or less constant and after 50 the wear out may start and slowly the death rate will start going up. Those similar characteristics will be there for the products also, especially the components. So we have to ensure that whatever we use, the spacecraft, electronic components and all, they all pass through this infant mortality and enter the useful zone for which various engineering techniques are available, which we will be doing. And mechanical elements like wheels and all, from the day they are born, they will be, from the time they are running, they will be going into the wear out zone. So it will be wearing out slowly. So all the design has to ensure that the required wear out will not exceed the threshold before we complete 15 years. So accordingly, the parts control program is designed where the parts selection is based on mission requirements, criticality, life, and there are so many things. The parts, uh, preferred parts list is there. We have to use this parts only from the preferred parts list. Okay, then the screening. The screening is something Amongst it, the burning is the most important thing, where the component is biased and burned for 240 hours. Uh, so that is some 10 days like that, continuously at uh, less 125 or less 175 degrees centigrade, depending on the type of component. The idea of this is, uh, based on Arrhenius reaction rate, if you do it for 10 days, it will be taking out some 25 years of component life around, so the, at uh, 25 degrees centigrade. So that is how you remove the infant mortality and enter. And there are several more things under parts control which I can be elaborating in short time. Then there is an reliability engineering where the probability whatever we have talked about that has to be estimated, controlled and managed. So nowhere it has to eliminate. Okay? So because we are not gods, so we have to finally the failure is bound to happen, but how to manage those probabilities, that is what reliability engineering addresses. So accordingly there are various design principles, assessment tools, statistically based sample testing, various things. So these are all various activities under reliability engineering as I go, some of them may come. So this is another place where it demonstrates actually the importance of paying attention to detail. We went for launch, I will make it very short. So we, when we went to Kuru, we found that uh, our spacecraft was okay, but it was a dual launch. Along with us, one Japanese spacecraft was supposed to be flown. So what you are seeing here is the inside of a uh, Antono aircraft, which carries uh, meant for cargo. But normally cargo planes, they will not have pressurized compartments except for the cabin uh, crew and uh, uh, loading crew. So that if you take what happened, the Japanese spacecraft, when they removed the covering uh, uh, whichever was there they brought from airport and uh, when they opened in the clean room they saw that that container has become a shape like this so why it happened is because of the differential pressure that is encountered during landing and takeoff of course everybody knows this and they designed some breather walls at all the four corners of the uh, container those breather walls are built into it but here maybe over that somebody last minute wanted to tie it with tarpaulin or something because of whatever reason and they have done with tarpaulin at the time of loading into the aircraft the tarpaulin should have been removed because they did not remove it the spacecraft got damaged and it took two years for them to come back again and of course some hundreds of course of expenditure and not just to them because we are co-passengers we our co-passenger is not ready we have to wait for four or five months to get to the suitable co-passenger so this is where devil is in the detail. Paying attention to detail is very important. And these are the numbers, whatever probabilities I told. Okay, here just one instant enter where two friends have gone to, sometimes people ask what happens if 0.999 becomes 998 like that. For them, okay, we cannot be straight away answering. So, but one, uh, two friends, they went to Egypt. So one of the friends has seen 
and he just wondered aloud after seeing a monument, it's a really wonderful what could be sage. Immediately the other friend has told her, it is two million and two year old. So the friend has asked, how are you able to tell so accurately, what is the dating technique that's available like that? Then they have told me. Now two years back I visited this place and at that time the curator told me that two million is uh, it's two million year old. So this is what uh, if you try to go to the last digit, but definitely reliability prediction has its own significance because especially when you have to choose amongst the alternate designs, alternate suppliers and all, the figure of merit for the uh, product's uh, quality and uh, its long lastingness that is comes from the reliability computations. Yeah. Then, like I told for parts, for materials also, there is a whole section of activities which are carried out. All of them I will be elaborating in my paper, Okay, so I will be skipping for now, but a very thorough uh, diligence is done for the materials control. Then company-wide quality control is not enough if you just uh, only the top people or only the project director somebody is interested. So the culture of quality has to pervade through the entire thing. So here, so I think uh, we, when we went to GSAT 18, there was a the cameraman. He has to, sorry, I think some work is going on behind my house. Okay, and that's why some disturbance you may be hearing. So, the, so at that time, the videographer, he will show us the rushes. They call video rushes. So that any objectionable question is there, that question they will not be transmitting on the launch day live video. So I was going through and clearing. He asked at some point, he stopped and asked me, Prakash, are you sure that you want this to be transmitted? I told him, yeah, what is the problem? He told him, one of the operators is not wearing the hand gloves. Okay. So even a cameraman is able to, photographer is able to see and tell that something is not as per the uh, process which is supposed to be. So this kind of culture, once it is percolates, it is uh, the job of assuring quality becomes easier. Then there is another analysis called failure mode effects and criticality analysis, where we assume various failure modes of components and try to see its impact and take the necessary corrective actions. Same way, fault tree analysis, one is from bottom to top, another is from top to bottom. You assume a failure at the top level, say landing failure or an accidental rocket motor firing, then you come down to uh, what uh, come down in the construction, what all can cause. So these kinds of analysis will help to strengthen the design. Then another important aspect is the test and evaluation. So there are various objectives of uh, test and evaluation where design margins validation is done through qualification testing and then workmanship defects for the actual flight unit are done by a process called environmental stress training and reliability for the devices which cannot be tested like pyrotechnic device. If there is an explosive type of uh, device that can be tested only on the field, it cannot be tested before. So those things are all are done by reliability demonstration test. That means some 80, 40 products are needed. We make 80 products, 40 of them are tested for various things. If all 40 succeed, only then the other part are used for the things. So because here the reliability is very, very important. Same there as I told for life testing for establishing whichever elements are characterized by wear out. So there the life test is important and test calibration data for the operations. Okay, this is skip because of time. And same way process control also the way parts, materials, process also has to be controlled. There the people have to be certified. All the processes have to be qualified. There is a document called process identification document. And not just the people who are making, but the vendor also has to be evaluated and certified wherever they are getting external support and electrostatic discharge control, cleanliness control, all these form part of And in the test and evaluation, another important part is the model philosophy where various models are constructed before going to the flight model to get an enhanced confidence in that. So this is another important uh, paradigm in uh, all aerospace systems. Test as you fly, fly as you test. There are examples, I am not going to elaborate, but it is very important to be able to simulate the exact scenario what happens, otherwise aerospace industry with a full of examples where everything is fine but it was not tested in the correct sequence or in the correct scenario. So if that is there, very small correction would have made the system work but it failed in field. So this is another aspect. 
derating is something where even if you have higher capacity don't use the full capacity for example 10 watt resistor is there you use it only for 5 watts okay if there is a 100 volts capacitor use it up to 50 volts only so that is the type of thing to extend the life then documentation is another important thing initially we had a lot of okay some problems during the qqm time that time that concerned project manager he told me we i asked too much of documentation you are insisting that time he told prakash documentation is the only thing that is left on the ground once the spacecraft is injected into the orbit so that struck the point to me so anything if you want to do later or reproduce we also do a certain level but when the customer is asking he will ask many more documents because that is the only way they can establish the confidence in the system this is not the end there is one more so this many types of documents are made for every single package then packages to subsystem subsystem to overall system then mission so like that various kinds of documents are being had then this is another important analysis called worst case circuit analysis there we assume that various parameters which were are there we assume the combined effect of all of them towards end of 15 years and try to see that the circuits that are designed will be working within the required uh, boundaries then non conformance control whatever problems we face during the spacecraft build they all have to be adhered into a process for the resolution so this various review boards and all are there so vidya balan says in dirty picture the film success uh, film ki success sirf teen cheez se hoti hai entertainment entertainment and entertainment same way with all my experience in four projects and much beyond i say that the project's timely realization happens due to interface interface and interface there are so many examples where improper understanding of the interface has led to serious problems and not only these problems uh, so the not only this but both technical and human interfaces also have to be taken care then software assurance because arian space they have lost when they upgraded from arian 3 to arian, arian 4 to arian 5 they lost one vehicle because there was one line of code error in the whole software similar error we had in our pslv and we lost so it's very important to have a very good software assurance program so all that is uh, i'm not going through but today anyway our own india is known for its software industry so there also various cmm level 1 2 3 4 5 so it's very important to have a very good software assurance program then this is another analysis which we don't do for our spacecrafts but when we go to missions like uh, space station and all where human life is involved and for a long time humans are going to settle so at that time it's important to do this analysis for snake circuit analysis then the reliability how to improve this is in the order of difficulty so the simple design quality level of parts then first the design has to be simple then the quality level of parts has to be enhanced then derating then redundancy because all systems will have to redundancy this is for critical system, uh, critical spacecrafts okay if it is experimental or for some students and like like that redundancy may not be insisted upon and then environment to come so reviews as i said it's a actually if you ask any of the isro chairman for the what is the reason behind success apart from the heritage and uh, whatever culture they also mention about the reviews because reviews are one which give an opportunity for us to examine ourselves and uh, actually more than the suggestions that come in the review to present for the review when they are preparing itself the designer or the whoever is uh, presenting to the review they then this will have an opportunity to go through the entire spectrum and it is really good and there is one saying if you always do if you what you always did you will always get what you always got this is an old saying so the emerging trends in the spacecraft or technology in the earlier is so used to develop and uh, then go to the user now systems are developed based on the user requirement complexity inversion earlier we every it was a taboo don't complicate space was the earlier thing. now we say the ground systems are very simple and the space is becoming if you see some of the satellites they are looking like a football field like that with all the pride panels and all that okay so that is the type of uh, complexity because we have now matured in the technologies we are confident that we can make reliable systems even though they are complex so that is complexity inversion has taken place 
and uh, on the, this is one end of the scale other end of the scale there is a lot of uh, interest in small and micro satellites apart from how this today's commercial world faster cheaper better nominal space means uh, nobody question when the jws to took uh, 40 years but today you cannot be proposing such projects also everybody wants results faster and cheaper and better so under this environment the approach of we also cannot stick to the heritage so there are so many changes which are happening so though we have come a long way we still believe space will not forgive you if you make mistakes 